Hello and welcome back to the Reiki Gem Wellness channel and the weekly episode that is just a lot more relaxed and a lot more conversational than the other videos in the week. And I like this because it's a great balance. It's a, a good balance between like focused learning and just free, free flow discussion. So for those who are new to the channel, my name is Shannon and I'm a certified Reiki master and teacher and a certified gemologist. And I combine those skills and passions to provide you with the knowledge, the tools, and the opportunities to practice incorporating crystal healing into your everyday life. And these videos also support that. Like I said, they're more casual, they're unscripted, they're free form, and it's just an opportunity to reflect and vi these videos support your crystal healing learning because the first part of the video, I provide examples of how I have used crystals and gemstones in my life the previous week. And then the second part of the video, I answer your most frequent questions about how to use crystal healing to support you improving your life. And if there is a question that you have about crystal healing or gemstones, then make sure to put that in the comments below. But also remember that I have a playlist in which I put all of these videos. So I may have already addressed one of your questions. So make sure to check the playlist and watch any of those videos that answer any of the questions you may have. So this week, I, I, it is, it should not be a surprise to anyone now because I've mentioned it a couple of times. There's some hints, but I am writing a book. I'm firmly into the process now. So I feel like I can really start openly talking about that because it's underway and I've been meeting with my team and my coach and I have the deadlines. So it's moving forward for sure. If you find that I seem to be a little slow in restocking some of the bracelet sets in the store, it's because I'm spending that extra time actually focused on writing rather than making the bracelets. And if you have ever wondered, I make all of those bracelets myself. I don't order them from a third party and resell them to you. I make each and every one of them. So it takes time. And right now I'm trying to balance aspects of Reiki gem wellness that I feel can benefit you, but some need a little more attention at times than others, but I still am making them just not at the speed that I was previously. What I'm going to talk about this week in gemstones that have helped me is what gemstones that I do I use for writing a book? There are many, there are five, and I'll show you. I have set up my writing desk as a writing altar, a place that is away from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the house that's quiet, that I can focus, do some meditation and grounding before I start writing. And I have this mm, tray, I'm trying to be on my writing desk, and it is my little crystal altar. I have a selenite candle holder with my candle, which I light. And this is a little uh, hand carved lotus tray. And I actually carved this probably like 15 years ago. And I've had this candle holder. It's been part of my regular Buddhist practices and meditation for years. So both of these are already like charged with my intention and energy. And then I have five gemstones sitting on this. And this is in the corner of my desk. All of the gemstones there support me. And when I need a particular one, then I have it right there to use. And the gemstones that I am using that I have picked, and the first one is carnelian. 
This is the artist stone and it helps you generate ideas and innovation and really stimulates the creative process. This companion is hematite. Now this is the stone of the mind and it helps you choose the right words for your message. So as a writer, I find that carnelian and hematite are a great combination because it gets the, the creative energy flowing and then helps you put those like words out on paper. And it's great for those who write out, who do public speaking and write out their words ahead of time. It's a great combination. So carnelian, hematite, um, sodalite is a stone of authenticity. It's a throat chakra gemstone and it really helps with communication. And it helps you discover and channel and show your authentic voice, your truth. And I want to keep that in mind as I'm writing to to let that truth come through. And then appetite, which we've just learned about. I posted a video, two videos recently on appetite. It's the stone of insight and it helps me tap into that inner wisdom and process it and bring it forth to share it with others. And then finally, Snowflake Obsidian, which is a gemstone that you'll be learning about this week. It's the crystal of the week. It is the stone of surrender. And in this book process, and with the, the coach that I'm working with, I'm being asked to do some activities and follow a process that I may not have considered before in writing and you know, I, I want to go with the flow of the process rather than trying to figure it out myself or do it my own way. Like, I have this support team for a reason. And it helps me surrender to the work, to the process, to just trying to think my way through it. So those are the five gemstones that are really there to support my process and get me to the finish line and to a book that I feel will just genuinely help you figure out which gemstones can help you and what you need more of in life, what you want to cultivate in life. So I'm really excited about that. All right, um, the question of the week, I, I get a lot and I've written a blog post on this. I most often refer people to the blog post and it's how do I clear, charge and activate my gemstones? Now I'm gonna go through it briefly here. So you'll have the blog post to read, you'll have this brief, discussion on it, but I'm also going to go into this in much more depth and instruction in my Crystal Reiki online course, which I'm targeting that to be available in early 2021, because right now I'm, I'm focused on writing the book, but after that has been then handed over to the publisher, then I will have time to really focus on getting the Crystal Reiki online course content for you, but there will be a portion in which we go into some really detailed instructions on how to cleanse, charge, and activate your crystals. But for the purposes of this video, what do these three things mean? To cleanse your gemstone is to free them from any negative or heavy energy that they've just accumulated through use or not use or from the environment. Many gemstones like malachite pick up 
they absorb energies really quickly and they should be cleansed on a regular basis. And if your gemstone, if you're feeling like it's not very effective for you, then it could be that it has accumulated some energies that you need to cleanse. Charging means to put energy into the gemstones so that they will work more effective and efficiently for you. And activating the gemstones means that you are giving it an intention for your life. So those are the, th the three areas there. As for cleansing crystals, there are several ways to do it. There's no right or wrong way. It, it is your personal preference which ones you use. One of the most common ways to cleanse crystals is with water. My favorite is with rain. I have a, a, a little bowl that has some filigree so water can drain out, but I have a bowl near my desk and when I feel like my gemstones need some cleansing, I put them in the bowl and when it rains outside, I run outside with my bowl and I put it out there so that the gemstones can get rained on and cleansed and cleared. There are often worries about which gemstones shouldn't I put in water and there are very few that will just dissolve in water. As a rock tumbler, water is involved with tumbling rocks and I have found that very, very, very few gemstones are really sensitive to water. Even with selenite, with satin spar, like it's not as sensitive to water as most articles say. And this is something that I have learned over time. One of my very favorite rock vendors did an experiment with it and left a, a batch out in the rain for an extended period of time and it never dissolved. There was no wear and tear on it at all. So water is one of my favorite or putting it putting your gemstones in a bowl of a clean water and putting it or leaving that overnight. So water, earth, putting the gemstones out on earth, directly on earth overnight for a couple of hours is always very helpful to cleanse it. Putting it, the gemstones in with dry rice is a slower method of cleansing, but it is effective as well. Using Reiki to cleanse your gemstones, and of course using gemstones to cleanse other gemstones. Kyanite, citrine, selenite, and white calcite are some gemstones that are phenomenal at cleansing other gemstones. Keep in mind though that kyanite and citrine, they are self-cleansing gemstones. They never accumulate negative energy. So you can keep them in a box with your other most commonly used gemstones and they can constantly clear and cleanse your gemstones and you don't need to clear them. But if you're using a white calcite or selenite, they also need to be cleansed. I use one that's really large, so it needs to be cleansed less fre frequently, but... Uh, so keep in mind that your cleansing stones, some of them need cleansing as well. But if you have a nice, good piece of, of blue kyanite, that will really help keep everything cleansed for you without having to cleanse it as well. So let me see, we've covered um, earth, water, and Reiki and gemstones. Some methods that people use that I don't are sunlight and salt. Salt is very cleansing. However, it's very caustic, it's very harsh. So I don't put my gemstones on a bed of salt and I don't put them in salt water. Can it be done? Yes, but I find it pretty harsh and I don't do that. And I don't put my gemstones in the sunlight to cleanse because so many gemstones are sun sensitive that they may just fade. 
And at some point I will be doing a let's talk on water sensitive and sun sensitive stones as well. That's coming up in the future. Now charging crystals, there are a couple of methods as well. And moonlight, sunlight, and Reiki. The one that I use most frequently is Reiki because it's here for me all the time. I have it and I can use it anytime that I want. But putting your gemstones out in the moonlight, especially the full moon, is a fantastic way to charge your crystals with that wonderful moon energy. It's, oh, it's, it's an energy that feels really good. So while I do use Reiki to cleanse and charge my gemstones on a regular basis, I do take the opportunity to put my gemstones out in on a full moon night to soak up that energy as well. Sunlight will charge it, but I only do it for a little bit of time, only like 10 or 15 minutes. And even then, I don't, I, I generally don't do that one, but it can be done. Then activating your crystals. This means turning it on to a specific intention. So when you, when you get a new gemstone and you're going to use it, so if you get a brand new gemstone, like I, say I just got this one, I would cleanse it, I would charge it, and then I would give it an intention. Like, and it's very simple. All you have to do is, is hold it and like, Howellite, I would like you to help me with patience when I'm frustrated. And that's it. It, that's it. Your gemstone is ready for use. However, some people take the extra step of activating it with a sound. So you can use either a Reiki Kotodama, which is something that can be learned in my Reiki level two course, which if all has gone right, should be out already and should be available. Or using a, a bell or a chime to near the stone to activate it. You, but the most important is that you give it an intention. Like, I would like to be using the stone for this. And it could be for multiple things. It could be, I would like stress relief, good sleep, and patience from the Howlite. Like, it can have multiple purposes, just as long as you know when you pick up that, like what situations you're gonna pick up and use that gemstone for. All right, so that was a little longer than I expected, but it's a question that I get so frequently. And if I have, if you still have questions, if I have left out something, especially one of the methods, because there are so many methods for cleansing and charging, then make sure to put that in the comments below as well. But thanks, thank you so much for joining me again this week for talking crystals and how I'm using them. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you so much.